our second interview. <laughs> ah! I have got the very, very gorgeous Cat Reynolds from the Business Beautician, or, or Catherine, if we're going to give you your Sunday name. Um, I know that lots of people will know you as Catherine, but I've never called you Catherine, so I'm not going to no. call you. Always call you what you like, or you. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, you. Thingy. <laughs> Who'd you flip? <laughs> so I am here with you today for our second um festival lineup and i'm very very excited to have you because i haven't interviewed you ever before no. which is quite exciting what have i let myself in for <laughs> it'll be fine it'll be fine so you are the um you're the the fairy behind the business beautician yes and how long have you had the business beautician up and running now I don't know. <laughs> no, I think it's about three and a half years now, officially, as the yeah. business position. But I was unofficially, accidentally designing and making websites before then. So it dropped into my head. Well, the business beautician name dropped into my head when um, my coach at the time suggested well why don't you try and do make some money doing that because you're good at that and you do lots of that anyway so oh okay then I'll do that and I was like, <laughs> the business beautician just went and that was that <laughs> the business beautician was born so you are quite an unusual breed <laughs> you well, are putting it yes <laughs> you are left brain meets right brain <laughs> and the total and few... dance. yeah you know because not many people out there are both and um i think that there's only you and naomi gilmore who i have ever experienced that can do the pretty and the really awfully complicated coding and <laughs> other horrible things and yeah. enjoy it. yeah yeah I enjoy both just as much. Actually, the tech puzzling stuff is almost better in a way because you're trying to solve something and it has an answer. I've made it work. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so it either so it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> and the design's like, oh, do I like it? Do they like it? Let's see if this, let's test this out. Mm -hmm. um, and I love creating stuff. And both to me, are creative so puzzling out why how something needs to work with everything i have on offer it, it's just like doing a big jigsaw mm -hmm. and then oh it's a nice picture at the end oh, i did that i made it work tick <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually quite relaxing um and i work with a lot of people who don't find tech relaxing whatsoever um like most so, people like, like not well, i guess so yes most people Whereas to me, yeah, it's just it's a challenge of figuring it out and getting it to work um, mm. and just playing around with stuff. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> how, how did you come to learn about the intricate detail of websites? How, how did that even happen? Uh, completely by accident. Um, I, had a bit, <laughs> I had a bit of a patchy career, career a job job thing um where I was, I was in marketing kind of you know that kind of in marketing but they don't actually teach you anything and you have yeah to yeah that kind of marketing in the small business the smallish business um where I was basically the entire department um, okay I had to, <laughs> I had to learn uh, the most bizarre things that in big big companies you'd have to outsource to like designers and developers and um copywriters well we didn't have any of that so it was just no. little me googling yeah how do i make a transparency in photoshop and then after three hours working it out um and but i've always been artistic so once i learnt the tools that's all they were they were just tools um nothing would stop me and then i started to get really frustrated because i was in 
the marketing department and being told to outsource to people. It's like, no, no, I don't. That's not how I would do it. Don't do it that way. <laughs> um, and then eventually, as technology improved so much that it became so much more accessible for me to really get a grip without having to go delve down into lots of codes and punctuation marks and if you move the punctuation mark it doesn't move and <laughs> and all this sort of thing it allowed me to be more creative and visual with um with building something that in the past had to be done by developers so that's mm -hmm. why i love wordpress because it's so accessible and i actually remember the first day i found wordpress which was i was i was working for this company again the marketing department and mm -hmm. strangely surrounded by a lot of people who have since gone on to be self-employed. Mm. <laughs> and one of them, who became a, a great photographer in York, if you're getting married, Alan Scott. <laughs> um, and he just developed his own website. And he didn't have, he was, he was a techie sort as well, but he mm. didn't have a, a whole background of website experience. I'd helped build websites with designers and developers from the official company, but it's my first glance of WordPress and it was like, oh, I want to go. Um, and so I built a website for my husband who is also self-employed um, and didn't really look back from there. And so, so I already had all the design stuff and it was just like yeah. that last little bit of the puzzle. And I've just learned through playing. Yeah. I play with things. Like a new toy. How can I so your husband's website was the first one that you ever built. It is. It's not the current one. How many has he had since then? Um three. Three websites. Getting him to write something or agree to do anything is a nightmare. So <laughs> just three. The difficult client. <laughs> then. Sorry? He's a difficult client then interesting you watching dear <laughs> you watching no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um no he'll be he'll be being the first to admit it in the past actually he's improved now because we've got another business i think we collect businesses mm -hmm. which you can do these days yeah well, again who would have thought let's time. talk about that on the who'd have thought let's talk who'd about have that thought? so i met you probably about six years ago it can't be probably about six yeah. years ago yeah and um we we went on a little bit of a journey together and mm -hmm. then we have both become self-employed and, and sort of progressed into where we are today and you have um, produced lots and lots of amazing websites for people. And Hubby's an osteopath. Yeah. So tell us about that next venture as well that, that's part of the, the collection of businesses that you've got. <laughs> well, when do we buy it? Last year, we bought a commercial building together um, so my husband's is an osteopath it's a really physical job mm -hmm. um and he's ironically kind of broken himself he gets arthritis and he broke himself a lot when he was younger and more stupid <laughs> um, so he doesn't work some of the time so he can only really work part-time so we needed a way for him to bring in income that he wasn't breaking himself for mm -hmm. so yeah we bought this commercial venture um we rent out rooms and every time somebody gives me a check for their room rental i go i, I got given money for owning a room <laughs> what? <laughs> what is that about um but yeah i've i've i do the kind of the businessy stuff behind it so they're a bit of financey things again numbers quite like that once they add up they add up and they're weird uh and also their marketing and their website design and um, bringing all the practitioners who rent off us into sort of the one under the one roof. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not all separate little businesses going off and not having the same messages. So, mm -hmm. so that's the latest version 
of his website is the, the Horsforth Health Hub. So we're in Horsforth Leeds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how many um, practitioners have you got in the hub now? We've got six different six. Co companies, yeah. Fabulous. Quite a few practitioners, but under six different names. Um, then we just got a, a chiropractor in. She was a bit nervous because she thought osteopathy and chiropractics are at war. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on another it's probably not the best but, but Nathan loves having her there because he likes having lots of different influences and uh, lots and of he can refer people across to her that aren't he right does, for him yeah. yeah and uh, well he'd do everything for free as well as long as it's right for the patient he's <laughs> he just wants to help totally totally so can we talk a little bit about kind of the ethos behind what you do? So your prominent business is obviously the business beautician. What is it that that you're all about? Because your design meets websites, meets done for you, meets if you don't shut up, it gets locked out. Oof. Meets done for you, meets learn it yourself. What what's the ethos behind the business as a whole? Uh, well, this is something I've been giving a lot of thought to <laughs> recently. Right. Um, and I showed you this, so I shall show you on screen the word today, or today, or, well, of now. This is probably back to front. Is that back to front? No, no, it's fine. It looks fine. Uh, and it's it's basically, it's not just about making things look pretty, although they do, um, mm -hmm. or making it work so you don't tear your hair out although it does it's about empowering these entrepreneurs or business owners they haven't quite got to entrepreneur yet <laughs> who need to be able to push their business forwards and the wonderful opportunities we've got with technology at the moment it's just simply amazing they these opportunities to start a business up from nothing for mm -hmm. free Mm -hmm. um with very little in your back pocket with very little except what's up here what you know mm -hmm. um your own skills it, it just didn't exist before because you didn't have the platform to get things out you had to borrow you had to set up i get a lot of mums actually who are like oh i don't want to go back to work how did you do it how do you set up a business i'm like you just start mm -hmm. um but having having that technology behind you can it, it can just explode your business mm. it really can um and i speak to a lot of people who are very untechy or they don't get it or they try and shy away from it and even starting out on facebook is big for them even starting up a profile is big for them um and thinking about getting a website is just way beyond what they can do and so they find themselves in a in a sort of a pickle where they're they're paying other people to do something but they don't understand what they're paying for them to do and then when they get what they've got they don't understand what they've got or how to to make it their own or how to move it forwards and so in a way that sticks them in even more because they can't grow mm. um and a business that doesn't grow tends to go <laughs> yeah yeah and you know it's <laughs> The first thing that I want to pick up there is I know that lots of people are tech phobic and mm. tech is just such, you know, for, for most business owners, I would imagine that tech is up there on the biggest headaches list. Yeah. What would your top tips be on that, on getting over that fear on, you know, being able to start to look at tech slightly differently? Um. I think just allowing yourself some space to play. So a lot of people approach technology from a, I've got to have a, whatever. So I've got to have a, a WordPress website, for example. And mm. they go on there, it's like, I've got to do it. It's got to be right. And I've got to do it all. And it has to be perfect before it goes out. And if, if it goes wrong, I'm just going to tear my hair out and die. Mm -hmm. And there's no space for trying stuff, publishing mm -hmm. stuff, just seeing how it goes, mm -hmm. um, writing some things, creating some menus, joining things together and getting it wrong. People mm -hmm. are actually scared of breaking the internet. 
you can't break the internet. In fact, you can't really break a website. And I have had some people really try. Um, <laughs> and there is, there is so much help out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of people, they're like, I don't know how to edit it. or I've done it and I've destroyed it. <laughs> and, and it's all gone wrong and I don't want to touch it. I don't yeah. want to touch it. I need somebody to do it for me. I don't want to touch it. Um, but allowing yourself to be in that frame of mind where you can just go in and play around with it mm-hmm. because actually you're not, you're not really going to break anything. You're not going to break the internet. Things aren't going to explode mm-hmm. yet. <laughs> it's always one. <laughs> Working on some coding for that. Uh, I'm actually brilliant at breaking things, but I see that as a real plus. Mm-hmm. Because I'm a developer's dream. I will find all their mistakes. <laughs> yeah. I've broken it again. I must be, the plug-in people must know, all know my name. I must be spread around. Like, you know how you get bands and bars down the road? <laughs> Not that I do. I don't. Don't get banned from bars. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's probably my name. All the plug-in is this is raw. We've got a right one here. <laughs> She's done it again. <laughs> Well, it doesn't work when you do this. And um, but that that's actually a plus because we're creating something together. Mm-hmm. It's not just um, somebody has produced some tech over here and I have to use it like this. Nowadays, it's more somebody has thought about something nice and creative over here. Let's have a play. Mm-hmm. And having having that attitude, you can't break it. You can only really go forwards because you'll be learning. Mm-hmm. Um, so when people come, they, they say to me, can I publish the page? It's like, publish the page? You can't do anything when it's not published. If it's not mm-hmm. attached to anything. Yeah. You can't see it. I mean, nobody's likely to find it. And in fact, if you don't publish your website, nobody's particularly likely to find it. So play away, you know, mm-hmm. and that's how you learn is playing. Mm-hmm. Um, just trying and playing but it does it does help to have somebody to call on there are so so many fantastic um for free facebook groups that you can pop in and just ask what have i done mm-hmm. um uh, another tip that i would have if you're scared if you're if you're trying out website stuff and you're playing around and you end up with a white screen of doom and you don't know what you've done mm-hmm. hosts are mostly really really helpful mm-hmm. if your website is slow or you have absolutely no idea why something isn't working ask for help mm-hmm. the live chat functions on most hosts they will answer yeah um same for plugins or or anything else you're struggling or themes or anything else you're struggling with on that um just ask for help so it, yeah it, it's about one you can't break it yeah two have a fiddle with it and three if you get stuck ask yeah yeah, don't sit there for hours trying to figure it out. Mm. Really don't. But I do that. I That's when you know I will it. figure it out myself. This is a challenge. It is my personal challenge and it's a war. But when I finally realised after wasting hours doing that, that if I'd have asked them first, I would have got an answer and would have solved it within 10 minutes. Yeah. I've certainly learned that the more that I look at it and overanalyze it, the more complicated a solution I seem to be searching for and <laughs> the more that it won't actually ever work because I've completely overcomplicated it when there was a really easy answer to start with. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my, my other top tip, techie nightmare, stop, go to bed. Always works out in the morning. I don't know what happens overnight maybe like the angels come down and give you an answer maybe it's my fairy business petition fairy comes down and gives you an answer this is how you do it and you get up it's like why did i not think of that <laughs> yeah, it, <worked>. <laughs> <laughs> it works again so you recommend wordpress what you know what is the particular reason for wordpress you know i know that lots of people have got um all sorts of other types of Wix and other things out there. What else? <laughs> Wix, sorry? What else is there other than Wix? There's Vista Print. <laughs> Never. 
one and one do a website builder thing mm -hmm. go daddy do something similar most of the big hosts now have a like a template setup mm -hmm. that you can sort of drop and do yeah um but the, the problem with those is you get stuck in them mm -hmm. and because they're developed by one particular company and limited to that company you're one stuck with that company and sometimes for some of them i won't name any names because don't do that. Um, <laughs> um you can't leave mm -hmm. they might actually take your domain name to ransom and they make it really really difficult so i've had a lot of struggles with getting things back for clients from those they're mm -hmm. not all that bad they're not all that bad but because it's so closed off and limited mm. um growing is really difficult and at some point even if you just want a basic website to start out with you'll want to grow and mm -hmm. you'll want to develop it and add on bits and pieces um and that's why i like wordpress because mm -hmm. it's what's known as open source so people can go in and play yeah it's <laughs> play again i'm just a big child aren't i you yeah. go in and play. They, that's why there are so many plugins. That's why there are free plugins, paid plugins, plugin companies, because it's free to do what you like. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, that can make it quite complicated, but it also means that your business is on the forefront of technology. So mm -hmm. when everybody says, for example, on Facebook, they've got a new um way to post or something news come out we've all got to try it it's facebook mm. stories <laughs> or facebook live um yeah. and suddenly everyone's talking about it and you're like oh god i've got to catch up well wordpress because it's right at the forefront of that it's often inventing these technologies mm. and moving them forwards so you don't find yourself on the back foot saying oh well my website platform doesn't do this with such and such and everybody's rushing off in this direction. Um, it's just so flexible. Mm. Um, and, and there's thousands of people working on developing it all of the time, isn't there? Yeah, well, not only WordPress.org, um, which is the, the main sort of the way it works, so that's mm -hmm. like the engine, um, but there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of plugin developers which is when you want to add different functions like a shop for example big function or um uh, social media link functions in there so you'd add another plugin for a bit of functionality uh, or a theme which is like the paint job mm -hmm. <laughs> so the theme is um, look and feel it's the way that it's laid out and yeah. then you add your plugins to give you more option yeah yeah and i i use a particular flexible theme um in my courses because it is more flexible with those options later on mm -hmm. um but the great thing about wordpress is if you choose a theme and you find it a bit um, narrow or restrictive or maybe the font's not right because themes can be quite prescriptive mm -hmm. um you can change it by pressing a button and here yeah. you might have to play around with some of the settings but it is literally i don't fancy that i'm gonna go for a different look <laughs> and you can press a button and change it buy a new theme buy a new um whatever so it's that having that power at your fingertips as um an entrepreneur is you know it's mind-boggling really what power we yield <laughs> 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 so when we look at, at themes you know there are gazillions of themes out there that is a real life number okay and so where themes. <laughs> where would you start when people are thinking about picking a theme what what would your advice be for that um uh, well i always start with your own business so what is very, very tempting is, so I need a website. I've heard WordPress is brilliant. I'm going to look for a theme. You can spend hours, days, years, in fact, years, <laughs> looking for a theme which just hits you as perfect. 
And mm -hmm. that's how you get into buying a seam here, there and everywhere. And you stack them up and then you can't decide and you just don't, don't have a direction. The direction needs to come from your own business. So starting out with what your website's for, <laughs> sounds obvious, but mm. it's really not. <laughs> well, once you start looking into it, you know, is it for selling? Is it for attracting people? Is it just to let people know what you're doing? Is it a really blog heavy? Do you want to link up with social media more? How do you work? Mm -hmm. um, and I always teach people to look at exactly what they want their business to do first online. Mm -hmm. um, and then to just sketch it out, play on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see if I've got a website design in mind. Because I literally just sketch something out with a biro normally of where I want things to sit, how I want people to move through the website so that... I thought you had a really lovely pencil that was about this big. I do, sometimes. Actually, it's gone missing. <gasps> Probably one of the kids have half-inched it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Let me see if I can find one. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's a very simple... Ah. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. Ah, oh, yes. Can you see it is a mess? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. This is what I mean. It is a series of boxes where I plan where pe I want people to filter through. So I'm literally drawing a home page. So if you can't draw, it doesn't matter. All you need to do is to figure out what you want people to be looking at, where you want them to go and how you want them to feel mm -hmm. as they do that. And then go and find a theme that fits into that. Because mm -hmm. as Emma says, there are gazillions out there. There mm -hmm. will be something that fits your vision. Um, mm -hmm. And what when you're buying or you're looking for a very prescriptive theme, which has the front page laid out and all the other pages laid out and then you just put in your words and your pictures mm -hmm. you really do need to be very focused on what you want it to do and which is the right one for you because you won't want to be fiddling around with the layout mm -hmm. um at a later date so if you're looking for that sort of theme um then that is the, the very very best way to start mm -hmm. um i use uh, the divi theme which is by elegant themes with my course is simply because it's more of a lay it out yourself so you can design your page like I just did with your pencils and your by rows and what have you um and your little colors <laughs> yeah. um but then you can move around the blocks on mm -hmm. the screen uh, so it's a lot more flexible uh, with that and also you can choose your fonts and images much better um mm -hmm. But I, I, there's no right way of doing it, but there is your way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And it has to be right for your business. Yeah, yeah. And I think that we can quite easily, you know, because there are so many around, we're looking for that kind of optimum um, theme that fits what we're envisaging. Mm. Whereas a lot of the time, like you say, you could take what you're envisaging and fit it into a theme type. So I suppose there's two ways of looking at it. When I, you know, with something like Divi, like you say, that is very flexible. But there are some themes that are quite rigid, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah. So how do you work out kind of whether it's quite a rigid theme or whether it's something that has a whole host more flexibility about it? Um there are some fantastic descriptions of what they do um, I would look out uh, so when, when you find a theme if it's somewhere like Theme Forest which is a very good place to look for themes um, or just some of WordPress's own free ones you can just have a look look at themes um, and it does tend to have a very good description of how many sorts of layouts they've got or the sorts of settings you can tweak Mm -hmm. So looking out for fonts, particularly um, colours, sometimes they will limit your colour palette, um, how many sorts of front pages they've got. And if there's one that really strikes you, brilliant. 
absolutely mm -hmm. brilliant um in, in terms of the more flexible themes, you've kind of got the builder sort of themes, which is what Divi is. So it's more a page builder. So those are the words that you'd look for if you want that sort of theme. If you're feeling a bit more creative or have uh, have some direction, then you'll know how, how to arrange your blocks. So that's fine. If you want something that is prescriptive and gives you a really good layout to begin with, then mm. don't go for a page builder. Um, mm. But yeah, they will have a description. They often have demos. So you've got a little theme for us, particular little demo button. So you can have a look at the different types of headers you've got on there or front page or contact forms or this sort of thing. Um, and then just find something that really works the shape mm -hmm. that you've designed on your page in pencil. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know that you'll be your website will be doing what you want it to do and another really important tip if you've chosen a theme and it's not right don't worry you can choose another one <laughs> you haven't broken it forever and it's the end of the world um as i say you can literally just press a button and try something else so <laughs> when you are trying to get to the bottom with your one-to-one -one clients as to what they need from you what sort of things are you thinking about what sort of questions are you asking them to because you know i would imagine that lots of people come to you and go i need a website <laughs> yes <laughs> what do i do <laughs> other than that um there are a, a couple of angles i come in um when i'm working one-to-one -one, i think a lot of it <laughs> i I pick up on through the conversation. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just talking to you here. It, the character comes through and that's, that makes my design brain work mm -hmm. like that. And that's how I get to the look and the feel of things and how you want your business to, to make people feel and how you feel about it. So yeah. that's my kind of psychic design thing. Intuitive. It's freaky, isn't it? Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Um, coming out so there's that so I always have conversations with one-to-one -one clients always because that's very very important yeah. um and then I have a, a little questionnaire which I don't want people to write essays <laughs> really don't or panic about it and that tends to cover more questions about ideal customers and basically who they want to attract on their website and what sort of things they're selling and why they'd want to buy it so we do go into a lot of the the what it's for who yeah. it's for um and what you want it to do now and in the future yeah um i got a puss cat here now <laughs> say hello no okay <laughs> um <laughs> so so my, a lot of people when, when i i come on they're like oh i don't i don't know who i'm who i'm talking to well I, who do you sell to now um and who do you like working with and all these sorts of questions that come into a lot of the the marketing um side of things they're absolutely central to what you want your website to be doing a website's just not a load of codes and nice pretty pictures on the internet it's a selling tool so we've got to make sure that it does that um mm -hmm. and it does it for them yeah and you know, <clears throat> when you're looking at kind of bringing that you know you said you you recognize that personality oh. what elements of you know is personality really helping you with look and feel is it helping you with imagery is it helping you with um fonts and things like that what what are you gleaning from bringing that personality into the website um having i always find it's it's central and everything really runs from that because the the people i i work with are the center of their business and if they don't feel connected with their website if they don't feel it's really theirs or it's 
sort of out of balance with what they're trying to achieve, then they don't use it and mm -hmm. they don't feel part of it. Um, so I try, they need to be part of their entire branding. It's not all about a font or a logo particularly <laughs> or pretty pictures or backgrounds. It's the whole thing. So they are part of that um, and they have to be part of that. Otherwise, it really doesn't work. Actually, I'm, I'm working with um, uh, a new one-to-one -one client next week. Yay! Um, and her website at the moment is, it's not her. She's not on it. And mm -hmm. because she's not on it, although it says what they do, it's mm -hmm. got no character. It's got no attraction. Mm -hmm. um, she's an absolutely lovely lady. And people in her industry they just love her she does so much for them she's so much part of their community and none of that is shown on the website which it just makes it feel empty and then yeah. it doesn't work so it's it's really really central to the whole thing that the brand not just the fonts and not just the colors and not just the logo is shown the whole way through in the way that they're talking and how it's laid out in the journey from the start to the finish and through all the menus and and how it's selling all of it is part of the personality the brand um yeah. of of the website and their business so it becomes it becomes like that really mm -hmm. it should become like that it's not i have a website it's like this part of mm -hmm. my thing <laughs> yeah how important do you think it is that you connect with them and that you, you know, are excited by their project and love their project? I, I think that's really important because otherwise I can't get a grip of of what they, where they're going or what they need or who they are. Um, I would find it very, very, <laughs> but I have done corporate websites mm -hmm. um, where it's been a room full of people who don't agree <laughs> yeah. and it's really hard to get a grip of the, the meaning behind it and all it then becomes is a brochure for yeah. for the company um it, it's i often try and pick out if i've got a situation where it's you know too many chefs pick out a head chef <laughs> we'll do we'll get a photograph yeah. <laughs> at least <laughs> so because it, it just it brings it to life it may it attracts people in it um it makes it talk to to people websites don't talk but the people behind it do um and it becomes part of the business so i, I don't like making brochure websites of we are innovative in, innovators leading exactly yes so we don't do we don't do that um but yeah what, one of the the first things i do before taking on new clients is i talk to them mm -hmm. so we've got to, got to connect mm -hmm. uh, otherwise it, yeah they won't get what they want otherwise absolutely what they need, yeah. and you talked about their imagery and photographs what are their role do you feel in people's sites as in the personal sort of well, yeah yeah you know how do you bring that forward you know i know lots of people really don't particularly like having their photographs in many places um you know is is stock photography good imagery i know you do an awful lot of drawing and mm. character based work so what are your thoughts on imagery generally um well, as for your, your mug shots, um, for a lot of the businesses that I work with, small um, heart-centred businesses, normally with um, few staff or, or even just one, like like, like us, um, they're the, they really are very, very important in, in giving an idea of, of who you are, what you're about, um, a glimpse into 
your thinking, why your business is, um, and really getting people to connect with you and your business. Um, and in fact, I just embarrassingly only just published my about me page. <laughs> And what we have to it. and I was really, really aware of it was that I need to get some more photographs taken off myself and I just haven't got round to it. It's like builder with a pile of bricks outside your house, that's my website. Yeah. Um never get round to it. <laughs> and I, I just was like, Oh, I can't use this photo again and so I put off my entire about me. So it stood in the way yeah. of It was resistance. I still need to get a photograph. I do have a photograph of me on there. It's not the right one, but it is a photograph of me. Um, and I've, I've now published that and I will, I will update it and I will get photographs taken of me because it really does connect better with people. So I try to do more video now and some more live city stuff. Although they like being live. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing it right now. Okay. I am. No, I'm not. I'm pretending I'm not. I'm not doing it. You're just, just having ignoring that live flash sign up there. <laughs> it's just me and you. It's fine. Don't it's worry fine. about it. It's fine. Um, so, so yeah, getting some of your of your life, of your desk, of how you work, of of a bit behind the scenes, of what makes you tick, um, mm -hmm. and some silly faces. Definitely silly faces. Don't worry about chins or photoshopping. Or whether you're you've got lipstick on or not, or because people don't like they like to see the real you. Um, well, but I remember you saying not to wear lipstick because I don't generally wear it day to day. No, no, it, and it, it some people do, and you can tell because it doesn't look out of place. I mm -hmm. think, and then I don't really. Yeah. So I've got a little bit on, but it's like a really natural one because <laughs> I was going live. <laughs> I'm, I'm an all or nothing kind of girl when it comes to lipstick. <laughs> I've either got a really, really dark colour on or there's nothing at all. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I generally can't be asked with that sort of thing. So <laughs> can't be asked on film either. Um, but yeah, just showing up as yourself. That's what people really want. So and that, that's what they want in images. As far as stock imagery goes, um, you, what you don't want is that lady on the phone <laughs> for customer services that we've all seen, all very corporate. Um, I tend to, I do use stock imagery a lot, but I tend to mix it up with other things. So it's always either as... Um, a background to get a feeling of something or um, a, a part of an image and I've then overlaid it with text and, um, and, and other pictures so that it blends in and it becomes mine. Um, so I do use a lot of stock photography um, and stock imagery. Uh, uh, again, there's, um, there's some great resources out there. Some of them are free, some of them are very little. Uh, mm -hmm. If you haven't come across it, Creative Market, um, you can just download some beautiful backgrounds to use mm -hmm. in like like glitter backgrounds and chevrons and all these things that you see all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, even watercolours and people will ask, oh, where did you get that? It's like, mm, it's my brand. It turns yeah. out you just got it from a little shop, but then they don't cost a lot. And if you're very picky about what sort of... Um, look you want and what sort of mood you want to create with them then mm -hmm. they don't look like stock um, mm -hmm. and, and that's really uh the way to go with it and then if you mix it up with a few stock pictures um and or images and then a few of you and your real life and whatever you snapped away with iphones or whatever um they could be really good photographs too and just mixing it up it makes you feel like a real a real person a real business rather than something you've just copied off of adobe stock photos <laughs> yeah the, the the thing is you stock but make it your own yeah yeah and be very picky yeah because yeah. Uh, you know, there's often i think the thing is that often with stock you often see the same stock photo yeah yeah. And it can be hard when you're when you're in an industry where you're all looking for 
um, women being really annoyed with social media, for example, you're all going to get the same thing. So sometimes it is a thinking outside the box. <laughs> thinking of something different. <laughs> um, and I do a little word association game. So that's one way to get out of it. So if you if you're just to think of something different, mm. a different way of looking at something, if you're thinking of also, I don't know, a communications photograph, then I often type it into a thesaurus, see what other words come up, and then type the other words into a photo search engine to see what I get. And sometimes mm. you can end up with some really bizarre things, but they just work. <laughs> I love the, the, the thesaurus. You know, I think it's a very underused um yeah. resource in business generally it is yeah it's yeah and, Playing then, with I, words. and when they have like the half words you can get some fantastic imagery ideas from these things <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yeah. so i would like to talk to you about um your creativity when it comes to videos because you said i like to make videos so tell us a little bit about your creativity when it comes to making videos cat Yes. <laughs> well, I get a genius idea um, and then see it through to the nth degree. You've probably noticed I don't mind looking silly on camera. I find looking silly on camera a lot easier than being sensible on camera. So I utilise that <laughs> to the max. And uh, uh, if you haven't seen them, I've done, uh, do you want to build a website? A la Frozen. Mm -hmm. and I've done a couple of silent movies with some mime <laughs> um, and my, my, my last one was um, a horror movie spoof uh, to, to launch my um, online gorgeous program <laughs> but uh, I basically just get one idea and um, play and in fact, my daughter does some of the filming. We have a great laugh doing it. Uh, at the end of, do you want to build a website? The camera's shaking because she's laughing too much. We had to take that one so many times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Have you got any more in the, in the ideas bank? Have you got any more coming soon? I have a channel. Yeah, I have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a secret. Tell that oh, you don't keep secrets. Do you want to keep? No. <laughs> <laughs> when can we expect to see it? I tend to do them with launching, mm -hmm. but I'm, I don't launch again till January, February next year. So, oh, I could do a Christmas one. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes. Sounds you like you're going to get a Christmas video. <laughs> So online gorgeous is is it still available now? Because she said that it yes yeah it's a, it closes at uh, the end of the week, so Friday it's uh, the doors are closing. So tell us the you know the kind of difference between actually getting your website done for you and getting something like online gorgeous. You know I learnt my um, initial website skills from your. Build a website in an hour masterclass way back when, and have then gone on to fiddle and try and see if it yeah. works. And yeah. I and have, you have come back to me at certain points and said I've broken it. And it's like, yeah, I haven't, Emma. <laughs> this me, I'm talking so ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, fiddled, tried. I've not brought the whole of the internet down at any given point. Um, and I've also had websites designed by you and other people too. So what, um, what's the difference? What's the difference between doing it yourself or getting somebody else to do it? Um, I get a number of different people who come in. I get obviously the people who are just wanting to level up their business, to take it to the next level. They've got maybe a basic site or one they can't control and it's been stolen happens a lot by, other, by developers and they just want to get it under their control mm -hmm. um 
and they want to level up to the next level. So they might want to add a shop or online courses or they just want to look far more professional than they ever have before. Um, and they want to be in charge of that or they maybe they don't have um, the the cash to to pay somebody to do it because it it's a lot of work for when I do one to one. I, I spend well, I've only taken on three this year um one-to-one clients because there's so much goes into it Mm -hmm. um so they they want something that's high quality that they know will look fabulous that they know will move their business to the next level but they don't necessarily have they're not there yet they don't have the cash to get that started and this is a really good way to get them sort of leveraged up into where they need to be um and not uh, and and not limit them in the future so this is a website that can grow um with their business and with whether they want to bring other people in later on or you know it, it's flexible in that way so that's good and then i also get the people who they've got a website they can't control it they don't know what to do with it um they've tried paying other people and it hasn't worked out Mm-hmm. um for whatever reason they're they haven't chosen the right people or they've tried to go the very corp the old-fashioned way so they've got a design company and there hasn't been that communication and it's just not for them um mm-hmm. there are people with websites dotted here there and everywhere and they just want to get everything together mm-hmm. and it's basically for them a matter of controlling their online business and being back in in the driving seat of it and being central to it making something that is them that they can drive forward and it's their business rather than handing it over to somebody else we're back um, to that word of power aren't we yeah <laughs> we're back to the word empower and being empowered yeah. to um have that control and yeah i know that you know there's lots of people out there who um design your website and then they won't let you access it do anything but essentially put a blog yeah, on so you have to email them Not every time down. you need to change something can mm. i change this sentence and then a week later they might all email you back yes what page was it on oh. <laughs> and that's the way it used to be because that's you know necessarily the way it had to be but now it really is not yeah. and so many of our businesses are online that's mm. where they are we don't and just do it They're yeah online yeah and they're so fluid that there's so much that can change so quickly and keeping things, I suppose, up to date and amending yeah. and working yeah. is yeah. exactly what we need to do. So a website is never finished, in other words. Oh, absolutely. I, I, that one did come to me earlier and I thought we must make sure that we get that one in. Absolutely, that, because no perfection is perfection on websites do not match. No. <laughs> they really do not because nothing ever gets done. Hence me not publishing my About Me page. For three and a half years. <laughs> there, yeah three and a half years <laughs> no there was one on my old site i think but it's a bit corporate whereas this is more like a brain there <laughs> so would anybody like to ask us anything has anybody got any um questions that they want us to cover um anything at all that you want to talk about um for our last five minutes been on for nearly an hour have some coffee then yeah next up i have got um the lovely sarah baker next from um the therapy biz coach so she is next on our lineup so i'm looking forward to that one too so that'd be a nice chat what do you do away from work what does your left and right brain do when you're not doing websites you want me to get you want me to admit it don't you don't know what you're talking about. You do. <laughs> <sighs> I play Final Fantasy gaming online. There you go. I said it. It's live. She's a total geek. <laughs> I'm an online geek too. <laughs> you're often also found looking in shop windows and... Um, giving inspiration from window displays and things, aren't you, Tim? 
<laughs> Photographing packaging in Waitrose and Morrison's while <laughs> shaking my head. <laughs> or, or the number of fonts on phone shops. Yes, still there, you know. I saw somebody in it the other day. No. Oh. Bad branding. Bad branding. Bad branding. How but many fonts? It's we good. do have next door now a wonderfully branded coffee shop. Well, they'll be making that look even worse then, won't they? Well, yeah. <laughs> how many brands? How many brands? How many fonts for your brand? No more than three, the very, very most. And by three, I also include italics and bolds. Okay. And how Although many? Yours is more fun because you've got, <laughs> it's supposed to be like a mixture. <laughs> how many prominent colours? Which is the point. Um, really prominent go-to action-y colours too. And like a plain background-y sort of white or um, black for the text. Um, mm. But um, five generally go for as the overall mixture. Five, mm. maybe six, but yeah. Um, but keep to them. But you normally find that you only really ever pick out two, maybe three major colours yeah. um, in a brand. Uh, and they're your main ones. And then yeah. the other ones are just kind of supporting to create the entire look. Is there any rules that you live by when you're looking at branding? I should say yes, but in reality, I'm a complete rebel. Just to see what works. Cool. I like that. Absolutely. Yes. Well, I, when when there is stacks and stacks of wheels, it just means it just becomes a bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, your your branding um, was sort of kind of made to break the rules, so they're quite a few broken in yours. And I, yeah, and I've continued to break more and more and more and more. Yeah. more. Which oh. was kind of the point. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here today, my darling. It was lovely to talk to you. Um, uh, you. You can pop in and pop any links in that people can go and have a look at your about page and things into the comments once we're done. And I will be going for a wee and filling my cup. And then I'll be back with Sarah Baker at 12 o'clock. So oh, it's happy. been lovely. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. And I'll be messaging you later on with them details. You know. <laughs> So I will speak to you soon. And um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Speak soon. Bye. Bye.